Hi everybody and welcome to a new Scratch tutorial. In version 8.2 we first introduced support for the Oculus Rift and therefore grading VR projects. So this tutorial will focus on the VR capabilities within the Scratch ecosystem. Enjoy! So let's start by entering the project and load a couple of VR clips. You will notice that those clips come in at different resolutions, mostly non-standard, but most of the time they will have a 2 to 1 aspect. Now many of those clips will come in without the corresponding metadata telling Scratch that this is actually a 360 VR clip. If this is the case you can do so by setting the projection type to equirectangular, like so. Or you can select multiple clips, enter the media browser and set it here. In the case of stereoscopic VR clips, you can set the stereotype right next to the projection dropdown. Handling Stereo 360 media is covered in more detail in our VR white paper on the Assimilate support side. So now Scratch knows that those clips are actually 360 clips. If you render out a JPEG or MP4, Scratch will include that metadata into the rendered file, so when you upload it to YouTube 360, Vimeo or Scratch Web, the corresponding portal will know that this is actually a VR clip. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure that our timeline has the same dimensions as our source clips. Therefore we can grab a source clip, go to outputs and drop it on the main output node, which represents our timeline and now has the same dimensions, frame rate, etc. as our source clips have. So let's have a look at the viewing tools inside Scratch. Per default, you will be looking at the flat projection of the equirectangular image. In this view, you will have the handle overlays of your layers and plugins available. Clicking the globe icon, you can put Scratch into 360 mode and look at the spherical projection of the image like you would with an Oculus Rift on. Next, let me introduce you to the pan and zoom tool we introduced with Scratch 8.4. You can bring it up by clicking the pan zoom button in the top menu bar. Use this tool to pan through your 360 spherical projection. Also, you can use your grading panels to control these three parameters, your pitch and roll. Now obviously, when you have an Oculus Rift attached to your workstation, it's the Oculus that controls the direction in which you're looking. Also, note that the native refresh rate of the Oculus is at 75Hz, which is why Scratch increases the playback frame rate by duplicating frames when the Oculus is moved. This serves for a smoother and more eye-friendly experience. You can control that by pressing Ctrl F1 to bring up the performance graph. Now when actually doing grading, you want to turn off 360 mode and look at the equirectangular image as it is. You can now grade your image, build up grading layers with masks, keys, curves and the likes, just like you're used to from non-VR clips. You can still use the pan and zoom tool to see in which direction your client with the Oculus on is currently looking. Even better, if you switch into dual view, you can leave the left view showing the flat image, whilst setting the right viewer to show the Oculus output. Back to single view and into 360 mode. Lastly, let's have a look at the settings for monitoring VR clips. In the monitor settings you can set the projection type for the Oculus. Per default, it is set to Auto, hence respects what projection type the clip is set to. But you can override that with a drop down here and set the projection to something else. Note that this setting only affects the dual head, SDI and Oculus output. It's independent from the main viewport on the UI. Also, the dual head or SDI output will show the exact same portion of the image you're looking at with the Oculus. So in whatever direction you're looking with the Oculus, the dual head and SDI preview will follow that direction. Alright, so let's assume we want to share our 360 clips over Scratch Web. To do so, we're going to the Tools menu and click on the Publish Media button. Important in this menu, with regards to 360 media, is the format dropdown, which we can set to native resolution. Now what this does is, it will simply take the output node's resolution, which we set previously, 
and use that for publishing to Scratch Web. Now as you can see, our timeline has quite a high resolution and also a very high frame rate, which might not be suitable for internet use, because it consumes a lot of bandwidth that might not be available for the one reviewing the media on Scratch Web, especially if a smartphone is used for reviewing. Now there's two things we can do to compensate for that. First, cut the resolution in half. Like so. Second, cut the frame rate in half. Like so. Now that we've done that, we need to change our clips accordingly, because they will now not only appear cropped, as our timeline's dimensions are smaller than our clip's dimensions, but also they will play half as fast, since we cut the frame rate in half. So let's go back into the player and take care of those two things. First, let's go to the config menu. As you can see, our clips are much bigger than our timeline is. To scale them down, simply hit the All button and then select Fit With. Now all of our shots are scaled to the timeline's dimensions. Next, let's go to the Edit menu. Here we can set the Vary Speed parameter. Let's set this to 200% to make the clips play double as fast to compensate for us cutting the frame rate in half. When doing so, make sure to have the ripple option enabled here so the slot length will adjust itself automatically when changing the vary speed. Alright, now let's get back to our publish menu and publish our timeline with native resolution selected. Now let's take a look at Scratch Web. When you published a 360 clip, you can identify that clip by the icon in the upper right corner of a thumbnail. Now let's enter into the player. Now the player automatically starts in 360 mode, meaning that you can use your mouse to drag across the screen to navigate through the image. Also, you can use the on-screen tools to navigate. The Scratch Web player also has the globe icon to turn off 360 mode, if you like. Also, Scratch Web features a headset view. Turning that on, you can now slide your smartphone into a headset and view the content there. We have implemented a VR setup button that you can use to adjust the view according to your smartphone. Your smartphone will then work as a magic viewer that also controls the direction in which you're looking. Currently, playback of media in 360 mode in Scratch Web is supported on Windows using a Chrome, Firefox or Edge browser. On OS X you can use Chrome or Firefox and on Android you can use Chrome. This allows you to run your dailies and review sessions with just a smartphone and a Google Cardboard, Samsung Gear VR or other mobile headsets. With version 8.4, Scratch has all the viewing options to manage 360 media and post, from Oculus to 360 projections on a reference monitor or STI projector. Also, you can collaborate easily with other systems. For instance, hook up the SDI out of your Nuke system to the live view of your Scratch system and view and grade your 360 media while wearing an Oculus Rift. VR workflows are new and continuously evolving. The new VR features in Scratch, together with its general flexibility and versatility, will help you stay on top of VR post-production. I hope this tutorial was useful to you and see you next time. Bye!